morning, everybody. You're live with New Image College. Thanks for joining in. Make sure that you've subscribed if you already haven't, and click the bell and make sure you get all of our notifications. Well, this is really exciting. We're starting the body module today. I know all of you are extremely excited as well. Um, we're going to go over a few things. I know that um, everyone has some new supplies um, to complete some of the techniques and procedures at home. So we're going to go over the kit list together. And I just want to let you guys know that we're going to start um, doing attendance um, based on who joins in on the live um, in the morning and halfway in between or at the end. Um, we will be monitoring that. Hi, everybody. We've got lots of people joining on now. Morning. And you do have to complete your exit cards now. So Anna has put those exit cards in your folders. Let me see here. There's three questions after the lesson that will go through uh, on Google Forms. Okay, so check your emails after this and uh, make sure you answer the three questions based on the lesson and um, you'll get full credits for attendance. Okay? Um, okay, so everyone should have their body kits. Now, you've got a few things we'll go through. If you want to grab your body kits now, make sure you have them and make sure you have wax strips, a can of wax, spatulas, so those wooden spatulas like tongue depressors, post waxing lotion, so that's that pink lotion in the little baggie, unscented oil, that's the massage oil, gloves, the gloves are vinyl, um, they're not latex, so you don't have to worry if anyone has latex allergies, plastic wrap, the plastic wrap is for body wraps, so when we do, when you practice body wraps on somebody, um, you will be wrapping them in that plastic wrap. You have one big piece. You have one essential oil. Should look like this. Just a little bottle of essential oil. Baby powder, which we're going to use as a barrier when we do waxing, and cotton pads. I know most of you probably have cotton or cotton pads at home, um, but we put some in the kit just to make sure. Okay, perfect. Gabby, you don't have yours yet? That's okay, you can grab it. You can still, um, there's still time to grab it. Um, <clears throat> I want you guys practicing at home. That doesn't mean you have to start practicing today, um, but the sooner you get it, the better. Okay, so, what we're going to go through today is um, focusing on the principles of aromatherapy. So what is aromatherapy? What are its origins? Where does it come from? How is it used? Um, ancient civilizations that used it and for what? Um, and then understanding the different ways it affects the body. And it affects the body uh, differently for everybody, um, but generally speaking and understanding the basics of aroma therapy wraps and massage and how you can incorporate that um, into your services. Okay, we're going to go over the aromatherapy chapter now and I'm going to show you how to make your own aromatherapy blend, your own aro aromatherapy blend for massage. Um, you can use it as a body oil after a shower um, and I'll also show you how to do an aromatherapy balm. Um, I always used to do aromatherapy bombs here at the school. I don't know if you guys remember. Um, we'd bring them into the classroom, um, and you would literally just pour boiling water into a bowl with uh, 10 to 15 drops of aromatherapy, and it would instantly diffuse into the room. Um, if you have aromatherapy diffusers, that's nice too. You can also boil a pot on the stove, and you can put your aromatherapy in to diffuse it if you don't actually have a diffuser or a nubilizer. Um, but we'll go over that in the chapter. There's lots of different ways you can diffuse uh, into the air, okay? Um, 
I will be assigning an aromatherapy project. Of course, you guys have to complete your aromatherapy questions. Um, you'll have an aromatherapy quiz, um, and that's what we're going to focus on this week. Next week, we're going to focus on massage, um, and I'm going to be doing a massage demo next week. So make sure you line up your models that you're going to be practicing on. Obviously, people that you're living with uh, are people that are in your household, uh, people that you've been self-isolating with, and uh, we can prep for those demos next week. Okay, so why don't you guys get your aromatherapy chapter out and let's read through together, okay? Okay, so aromatherapy is the inhalation and bodily application of essential oils. Pure essential oils are extracted from the flower, the leaf, resin, bark, root, twig, seed, berry, and rind. You need to know that the basic principle of aromatherapy is to strengthen the self-healing process by indirect stimulation of the immune system. The results of aromatherapy are very individual. No two people are affected the same way. Everyone is affected differently. The history of aromatherapy. Aromatherapy was used for ceremonial purposes, medicinal, and cosmetic reasons. So three, ceremonial, medicinal, and cosmetic um, in most ancient civilizations. Some of the earliest documents used of aromatherapy were in ancient Egypt. 3,000-year-old papyruses, papyrus is paper rush. It's what ancient civilizations used to write on, like the scrolls that you see in movies. Um, they have been discovered containing remedies for many types of illnesses. The ancient Egyptians used aromatic plants and their essential oils to create massage oils, medicines, embalming preparations, skin products, fragrances, perfumes, and cosmetics. There are other written accounts of aromatic oil used in ancient Africa, Mesopotamia, Greece, Babylon, and China. Greek and Roman civilizations later adopted the use of aromatic oils for both medicinal and cosmetic reasons as well. Most uh, ancient civilizations did. Um, during uh, the trade routes, they would trade tea and they would trade essential oils. Aromatics were used in early Rome where massage with oil would often follow a typical bath. So you guys remember hearing about the Roman uh, bathhouses. They were very extravagant, lavish um, bathhouses, separate for men and women, where women uh, and men would bathe. Ayurveda, traditional indigenous medicine, has been practiced for more than 3,000 years and incorporates aromatic massage as one of its main as uh, aspects. Aztecs, Incas, and Mayans used, uh, used aromatic plants and oils in ceremony and daily life. The Aztecs specifically were well known for their plant remedies. Indigenous people also used aromatic oils, smudges, and aromatic plant-based remedies. So there's different types of aromatherapy. The different types of aromatherapy are cosmetic, massage, and olfactory. Essential oils should always be diluted in a carrier oil or water. Very important that you dilute your essential oils. Now, yes, there are lots of essential oils that are safe to directly put on the skin, but don't start putting essential oils directly on the skin until you've done your aromatherapy research project. And I will be assigning that uh, today. You guys can start researching your oils today. Um, and once you are familiar with the contraindications and the uses um, of aromatherapy, then I'll be more confident um, for you to directly apply um, on the skin. But if you're using aromatherapy for massage um, or you're using it, using it in a bath, um, please dilute it in oil or preferably oil. Um, water is good too. There are some volatile essential oils that do need oil, um, like sweet orange. Um, if you put sweet orange directly on the skin, um, especially in a bath, a hot bath, um, it can cause first degree burns. So you have to be careful about that. 
So essentially, generally speaking, 20 to 25 drops of essential oil in two ounces or 60 mils of carrier oil, okay? So the three types of aromatherapy. Cosmetic um, is used in facial, skin, body, and hair care products. Massage aromatherapy, obviously used when you do um, professional massage treatments. And olfactory essential oils are released into the environment around you by diffusion allowing for inhalation. So diffusion is the evaporation of aromatic essential oils into the atmosphere using aromatherapy equipment, okay? You've all seen those nubilizers from Sage um, where you can put the water in, you put your aromatherapy in, you plug it in, you turn it on, and it diffuses this dense white mist, um, aromatic mist, a nubilizer. Um, you can get the little candles where you put the aromatherapy in the top, you light a candle underneath, and it burns the aromatherapy and diffuses it into the air as well. Um, there's lots of different equipment that you can get. Several different devices are used to fill the airspace in a room. Some use heat as a means of evaporating the essential oils. This spreads the essential oil vapor throughout the room. Candle diffusers and ceramic or brass rings placed on light bulbs are commonly used as well. Actually, the ceramic rings that you can get are really cool. Um, if you have a light bulb that you screw in, before you screw it in, you put the ceramic ring on, you put it up and screw it in, and then the ring actually sits on the light bulb. And the whole purpose of that is that the heat from the light bulb will diffuse the aromatherapy. So you just drip the aromatherapy directly on the ceramic ring, and then you place it on the light bulb. Um, you don't really want to use those artificial air fresheners, Glade air fresheners, Febreze, um, the plug-it-in air fresheners. All of that's synthetic and really bad for the lungs um, and nasal passageway. So now that you know about aromatherapy, or you're gonna know a little bit more about aromatherapy, um, you can start using um, a more natural approach to air freshening. Candle diffuser is also really good. Um, other diffusers consist of an electrical air pump, um, nubilizer, which we talked about. This uh, will microionize the volatile oil, thus allowing for the most efficient form of inhalation treatment. So effects of aromatherapy. When inhaled, essential oils affect our bodies in several ways. The essential oil component molecules enter the nasal passages where they stimulate the olfactory nerve. This sends messages directly to the limb limbic system. The limbic system located in the brain is the home of memory and learning uh, and emotion. So this, uh, the inhalation of this oil triggers changes within the limbic system, which in turn can stimulate uh, psychological responses within the body via the nervous, endocrine, or immune systems. So on your quiz, you will need to know what systems are affected by aromatherapy. So right here, we have the nervous system. It can either stimulate or relax. The endocrine system, the endocrine system is responsible for all the ductless glands. So mostly like hormones, happy hormones, adrenaline, uh, cortisone. So, um, it directly affects hormones. Um, it directly affects the immune system. We talked about the pure essence from a plant um, can directly stimulate and help the body heal itself. Um, what other systems do you think are affected by aromatherapy? Think about peppermint, camphor, rosemary, um, mint, when you're breathing it in, those really strong eucalyptus, those really strong um, menthol type aromatic oils are really good for the lungs. Clearing the nasal passage. Whenever I have a really bad cough or I have a really chesty cough, I will put these aromatherapy oils directly on my skin. Certain ones, um, peppermint is okay, eucalyptus is okay camphor is okay. It feels really cool and cold when you put it directly on, on the chest, but it will, and it has for me personally, um, remember aromatherapy works different for everybody, um, completely get rid of my cough and clear up any mucus or congestion that I have in my chest. So um, it works really good that way. 
So we've got the nervous system, endocrine system, immune system, respiratory system, um, aromatherapy oils can increase blood circulation, so circulatory system. Um, those are the main ones. On your quiz, you'll just need to know five, okay? And then with the limbic system, um, aromatherapy affects the limbic system. We know the limbic system is related to memory and emotion. So you remember um, ever walking into a room or a cafe or a friend's house or someone's basement and then you get this smell that is really familiar to you and you're like, hey, that reminds me of my childhood or hey, that reminds me, that reminds me of my grandma's kitchen. And it brings back this flood of memory and emotion. That's the limbic system. So certain smells that affect um, the olfactory bulbs will induce certain emotion and feelings. So arom aromatherapy does that as well. The main two actions of aromatherapy are stimulation and sedation. Okay, so either stimulation or sedation of body systems or organs can occur. Okay, it's either going to be stimulating or relaxing. Sedation means relaxation. And when the body is relaxing or it's being stimulated, this happens directly through the nervous system, usually. Aromatherapy oils can also indirectly raise and lower blood pressure. So we already talked about the circulatory system being stimulated. And possibly aid in normalization of hormone secretion. The inhalation method can be useful for respiratory symptoms, and relaxation through the nervous system and muscular system. So there's another system, the muscular system. In addition, when applied topically, essential oils can exhibit anti antibacterial and antiseptic, antifungal, anti-inflammatory properties, antimicrobial, which is antibacterial. So essential oils are used for a lot of things. Um, most all essential oils are antibacterial um, lavender is really good for burns. Tea tree um, is really good for fungal infections, toenail fungal infections or cuts. Um, um, and certain essential oils like lavender or rose can actually calm the skin and reduce inflammation. So these are things I want you guys to look for when you're researching during your uh, project over the next couple of weeks, okay? The difference between essential oils and hydrosols. Essential oils are non-oily in texture and, obtained, and are obtained by the plants by a process called distillation. Selected plant materials are heated with water or steam or both in an enclosed still so that their volatile components are released from the plant. The components vaporize and are then present in the steam. The steam, and va the steam vapor then condenses back into a liquid state. Due to differences in density, the essential oil separates from the water. The separated water contains water-soluble essential oil and is called the hydrosol or hydrolate. So the floral water that separates after the process of distillation is um, the hydrosol. The hydrosol um, is a floral water and it's still used in shampoos, conditioners, face creams, body creams, lots of different things. It still has components of the pure essential oil, but it's just not 100% pure. The pure essential oil is the highly concentrated, volatile, aromatic uh, essence of the plant left over. And that's what these are. Essential oils may perform more than one function in living plants. They seem to be part of the plant's immune system. So that makes sense if these pure essential oils were extracting from the plant, all, our, all parts of the plant um, is part of the immune system, then that makes sense that it helps with our immune system stimulating and strengthening um, the self-healing process in our own bodies. There are lots of contraindications when using essential oils though. You have to be very careful 
yes, pregnancy is the number one. You have to be very careful with essential oils. Remember what we talked about um, in the skincare module about concentrates and what makes serums and concentrates so special? The molecular structure. So when the molecular structure is tiny, 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 it can pierce through and permeate through the skin um, quite rapidly, right through the bloodstream, into the blood, into the fetus, into all parts of the body. Um, so you have to be very careful. Uh, essential oils are toxic to the fetus. And again, there are some essential oils, very few, that are safe for use when you're pregnant or when your clients are pregnant. But again, I want you to research all that and find out for yourself. And I want you to gather all that information in your project. Any systemic diseases, um, obviously we know cancer is a huge uh, contraindication for lots of different treatments. Um, when you have something that aggressive and that stimulating, um, going straight into the body, straight into the skin, straight into the organs, um, obviously not a good idea for somebody that has cancer, um, unless they have a doctor's note or they're in remission. Open wounds or infections. You can use certain aromatherapies to help heal um, a wound or an infection that is in the healing stage or healing process, but don't ever pour essential oils into an open cut or a fresh lesion, okay? The skin can't really be broken. It needs to be in the healing process, okay? Allergic skin or rashes, um, if there's hives or redness or inflammation, you don't really want to use essential oil. Um, Telangiectasia or cuprose, so broken capillaries on the face. Um, stay away from stimulating essential oils that are going to increase that um, blood flow and vasodilation, uh, possibly making the cuprose worse. High low blood pressure. If your client is on medication for high low blood pressure, then yes, stay away from uh, essential oils. If the client is not on medication for blood pressure, then it's, it's usually fine. But um, if you're taking medication to lower your, your blood pressure and you're using these stimulating essential oils on the body, we don't want that to contraindicate the effects of the medication. Varicose veins, we want to stay away from massage, aromatherapy, um, directly on top of varicose veins. We know that varicose veins are caused by a backup or pooling of blood in that um, vein, and it's caused by weak valves. So when the valves are weak and the blood pools, it can cause blood clotting. And if that clot gets loose, it can cause serious health issues. So no stimulation, massage, aromatherapy on varicose veins. And varicose veins are really painful for the client. Or if you have them, you know they're really painful. So they're not going to want any stimulation over that area. Anyway. And we'll go, we'll go over all your questions at the end. Um, so yeah, if you want to keep writing them now, that's fine. Um, and I'll address them all at the end. Um, carrier oils. A carrier oil is a base oil that essential oils can be added to. Direct contact with skin can sometimes cause skin irritations. You need a carrier oil to add slip and dilute the concentrate of the essential oils. So here are some very popular carrier oils that you can use. Um, sweet almond oil an excellent softening lubricant, medium to lightweight, multi-purpose massage oil. Um, you will have to name some base oils on your quiz and your final exam. So just make sure that you, when you name it, you have to describe it. You don't have to say softening, lubricating, lubricating medium to lightweight, multi-purpose uh, massage oil. Just give me one piece of information. So say uh, softening or lubricating or medium to lightweight. Um, just one little tidbit of info. Apricot oil, you can say, is lightweight or great for aged or dry skin. Avocado oil, you can say medium or heavyweight. Um, nutritious oil, great for dull, dry skin. Grapeseed oil, you can say, is lightweight. Um, you can say it has a slight odor. And so usually you want to use aromatherapy oil when you use grapeseed oil. Jojoba oil resembles the same structure as the sebum in our own skin. That's why jojoba oil is usually um, used the most in our industry. 
Um, it has the longest shelf life. It has um, no odor. It's a nice light medium uh, weight texture and um, it's quite cost effective. Fun recipes to try at home. So I want you guys to try these recipes at home. If you complete a recipe, you can show me what essential oils you used, what container you put it in. I want to know why you chose that recipe. What is it for? Is it for back pain, menstrual pain, headaches, um, insomnia? If you want to fix your dry cracked skin, rose, chamomile, geranium, and pettigrain are a great combination. If you have swollen feet, lavender, chamomile, rosemary, fennel, and jojoba oil are great. Oils for calming, lavender, rosemary, sandalwood, and ylang ylang. So you can mix more than two, three oils together. Sometimes you can mix a combination of four to five oils together and it's totally fine. But there is a way that you should mix the oils. I'm going to get into this in a minute here. We're going to talk about um, high notes, medium notes, notes, and low notes, and how you want to mix them together in a certain way to create a long-lasting aroma. Ambiance, vanilla, cinnamon, orange, pine, jasmine, rose, energy, eucalyptus, orange, peppermint, geranium, invigorating, spearmint, peppermint, lemon, stress relief, lavender, chamomile, romance, ylang ylang, sandalwood, jasmine, foot odor, you can use sage and baking soda. Um, if you want to use it like an antibacterial or a bactericide, um, cinnamon, clove, lemon, eucalyptus, lavender, pine, grapefruit, cuts and scrapes, tea tree, lavender, eucalyptus. Um, so if you want to heal the skin or you want to heal um, a lesion or a wound on the skin, the best combination is usually tea tree and lavender. Tea tree is highly antibacterial and heals the skin and lavender um, is extremely healing um, and regenerating for the skin. So that's a good combination for that. Make sure you know and understand the essential oils you use or you could cause harm to your client or yourself. Know your contraindications. Okay. So that's it for the chapter. You guys have your questions. Um, one question that um, is not on here that you need to know on your quiz is the basic principle of aromatherapy. So the basic principle is to induce the body to heal itself. So it's kind of, yeah, the second paragraph on the first page. The basic principle of aromatherapy is to strengthen the self-healing process by indirect stimulation of the immune system, um, making the body um, heal itself, kind of kickstarts the body to heal itself, okay? So that second paragraph on your first page will be on your quiz. So highlight that or mark that down. And everything else is pretty much the same. Um, again, we talked about different systems that are affected by aromatherapy. Um, I don't see that in your questions, so just make a mental note or write that down in your notes as well. Five systems affected by aromatherapy. So again, we have muscular system, respiratory system, limbic system, endocrine system, nervous system, circulatory system. Um, so you only need to know five for your quiz. Okay? And then I think that's it. You guys know your dilution rates, and that's good. 
Okay. So let's open it up for questions now. I see a few questions up there. Gabby, like in grape oil. Yes, you can use grapeseed oil. Yeah, I don't know if it was in our manual. Oh yeah, grapeseed oil. Yeah. Mojkin, um, rose, rose is generally safe for sensitive skin, yes. Um, but that's why I want you to do this research project and I want you to find out the facts about different essential oils and what different essential oils are used for different conditions. So like our Guino Aroma Blends, you, we just finished the skincare module, um, the Serenity we know can safely be used on the face. And this is Guino's original um, blend that they put together um, exclusively for their skincare line. So the Serenity is for sensitive skin and it does have rose. Um, they have their own blend for balance, so for oily skin, purifying, for comfort, for nourishing, moisturizing, um, for vitality, rejuvenating. So they have created their own blends of essential oils based on what they do for the skin and created their own um, blends. Now, their blends are in a base of oil. They have their own specific um, carrier oil that they use. Um, and we've all used these in our facials and they're great and they're amazing. They don't make you break out, um, but they give you that extra boost, um, like a concentrate or a serum would uh, for your skin. Ambiance is, like when you walk into a room, it like sets the tone, it sets the mood, it's the ambiance. Like when you walk into a room and it smells like lavender, it's a relaxing kind of ambiance. When it smells like roses and geranium, it's like more of a romantic kind of. Ambiance is just the feeling or the mood that um, is given to you um, when you walk into a room. Is rosemary good for dehydrated skin? Yes, rosemary is a staple essential oil. Rosemary is good for pretty much everything. You can use rosemary directly on the skin for um, breathing issues, chest coughs. Um, rosemary is really good if you use it in the scalp and you massage it into the scalp. It's really good for dandruff, really good for stimulating hair growth, um, really good for a hair treatment. If you mix rosemary in with coconut oil, and you put it on your hair, you put it on the ends of the hair, it helps with um, the condition of your hair, split ends. So uh, rosemary is really good, yes. Uh, Anna sent the e-cards through Google Forms. Awesome, Anna, thank you. Sent the aromatherapy quiz, great. Um, Gabby, I mean grapes seed oil and it's in the manual, thank you. Oh, yeah, great for you. Yeah, original feeling in the room, thanks. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, any other questions about aromatherapy that you might have? Okay, let's go over the project. <clears throat> um, now normally when I assign a project, you guys know you usually have a week or two to finish it. Depending on the complexity of the project, you might have more than that. Um, I haven't really talked with Anna about when the due date is for this yet, so just start working on it this week and Anna will post um, when the due date is for this or I'll let you guys know in the Zoom tomorrow. Um, this one's pretty straightforward. Create your own aromatherapy massage recipe. Create a blend specific to your needs um, to either induce sleep, alleviate menstrual cramps, stimulate or rejuvenate, um, or for relaxation purposes. 
So you can create a blend specific to whatever you wish. Now I know you were all given an aromatherapy oil, so you can use that one if you want. Um, if you want to shop for different aromatherapy oils online, you can. I know there's lots of different uh, websites, um, even AliExpress, um, Amazon. Amazon Prime, you can go on and you can buy a whole set of mini essential oils for a really good price, I think for like under $30. Um, don't pay too much for the aromatherapy oils though, you don't want to pay more than $6 a bottle. Um, that's kind of a retail price, like if you go to Sage or you go to um, these different places that sell pure essential oils, Aveda, um, it's quite overpriced. Obviously it's retail, it's a good quality, um, maybe organic, but you don't need to spend that much on aromatherapy oils. If you guys want to check out, um, I'm not sure what wholesalers are still open right now um, or open for um, selling retail, but check out Ports, P-O-R-T-Z, um, and see if they are selling online. They have really good prices for aromatherapy oils. Um, Ports is in Richmond. List the oil that you used. You can use more than one. Tell me why you used it. List your carrier oil that you used and the benefits you want to achieve. Your recipe must include at least uh, 200 milliliters of carrier oil. Now, if you're using the oils um, that were given to you in the kit, you don't have to use 200 milliliters. Um, it would be nice if you could create this aroma blend for your massage that we're going to be learning next week. Um, so maybe customize it geared towards maybe what your client is going to want. Um, but as long as your uh, project is at least 30 mils. So put it in a nice little container, 30 mils of base oil. So we know with 30 mils of base oil, if 60 mils is um, around 20, 25 drops, um, then if you're doing 30 mils, it would probably be like 10 to 15 drops of essential oil, okay? And then write a paragraph to explain why you chose the specific oils, how they benefit the body, um, and why you chose your base oil. And don't just say because these are the oils I got in my kit. Um, research the oils. I know a lot of you got the same oils, some of you got different essential oils, um, but research that oil if that's what you're using and find out what the benefits are. Okay. Now this is just one project. If you guys want to earn bonus points, I do have another project. So um, I'll be sending that one individually or Anna will be sending that one individually. If you do want to do the project for extra bonus points, um, just email us um, and we'll send it to you um, via email, okay? This essential oil project is you studying and researching 10 different aromatherapy oils, okay? So I kind of want everyone to do this. I want to kind of make this a mandatory um, project. You will get extra hours if you do it and you will get bonus points. So maybe I'll just let Anna know and she can put it in the folders right away for everybody and then you guys can decide if you want to do it. Um, it does take a little more time to do, um, but the research project is very valuable um, for you. You want to research contraindications, you want to uh, research different uses. Um, aromatherapy oil isn't just used topically on the skin. Um, you can use it orally, you can put it in your drinks, you can bake with it, you can put it in your food. Um, there's lots of different food grade uh, aromatherapy oils as well. So it's really interesting and um, again, I highly recommend that you guys do this. We will put it in your folders and um, we can talk more about that tomorrow during the Zoom as well, okay? Okay, so I'm going to show you guys now how to mix your oils. It's pretty straightforward. If you have a little bowl and a measuring, a little measuring cup, um, then you can mix it quite easily. And I'm going to show you how you heat it up in a bowl before you use it for massage, okay?
Okay, yeah, Gabby, I can do that. Um, I don't know off the top of my head right now, but I have seen um, a lot of good deals. Um, and you can buy like sometimes 10 to 20 different oils and they come in a cute little pack. Um, so I will look online and see which ones that I like and then I'll let you guys know tomorrow or I'll just um, let you know in our Facebook group, yeah. Okay. So I'm going to turn the kettle on now. You want to boil water. You never heat up aromatherapy oils in a microwave. We know that we shouldn't even heat up our food in the microwave because it destroys the molecular structure of the food, of the nutrients in the food. Um, and it does the same thing for essential oils. Uh, essential oils are very delicate. They're very volatile. So when you heat them up in the microwave, um, the radiation does um, kill off the um, chemical components that make that essential oil nutritious um, and beneficial for the skin, okay? So it won't, it won't affect the smell as much, but it's not going to be as um, beneficial um, to the conditioning of the skin. So always heat up with boiling water. We want to have a medium-sized bowl. So this is um, for when we do massage next week. I'm going to use a bowl this size. And I'm going to put my oil in a bowl like this. My bowl of aromatherapy oil goes in my boiling water. And that's how it heats up. Okay? And while it's heating up, I have aromatherapy in my oil. It's going to be diffusing that into the air as well. Now, if I want quick diffusion, if my client's going to be coming into the room within two minutes or three minutes, then I can directly put, let's do, let's do some eucalyptus. So my aromatherapy oil that I'm going to use for massage is here. This is just going to be boiling water. So for quick diffusion, two drops of eucalyptus. two drops of frankincense, because I love frankincense, and I love eucalyptus, and I love geranium. So one, two, so that's about six drops. You, don't, you need only like five to six drops for your aromatherapy balm. Now for my oil, Never put your aromatherapy or pure aromatherapy um, directly in your bowl first because it sticks to the bottom. So I'm going to put my, I'm going to measure out my base oil, put my base oil in first, then you put your aromatherapy oil in, okay? And then it mixes better. Um, you don't want it sticking to the bottom. If I'm scooping out and using the oil to massage, I'm not going to be able to reach to the bottom and get that um, essential oil, okay? So first, my measuring cup. my oil, So I'm going to use 30 mils. If I'm doing a half body massage, if I'm only doing a back, neck and shoulder massage, 30 mils is good. If I'm doing a full body massage, um, which I'll be demoing next week, then I'm going to go to 60 mils. Okay? And then again, based on the size of your client, if you're doing someone that's bigger, you can use a little bit more oil if you know ahead of time. If you have somebody that's really petite, then you can use less oil. But it's always better to use less oil and then go back and grab a little bit more just so you don't waste it. Okay, so my little bowl, I'm putting my 30 mils in. And with your measuring um, containers, um, Make sure you wash them really good. Hot soapy water, put it in the dishwasher. Um, if you're cooking with this or using this for other purposes or um, you're using it in facials, 
um, to measure out different products, you don't want to have that oily residue stuck in here, okay? Now for my 30 mils of oil, I know I can use 10 to 15 drops comfortably. So I will want to use again, let's do frankincense. Let's do one, two, three, four, five frankincense and let's do five lime. Lime's really good too. I'm not there. Put it in my bowl. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, six. Okay, so that means only four drops of my geranium. Actually, let's do bergamot. Four. Four. So that's 15 drops. Mmm, yum. Okay, so my kettle has boiled. Yeah, you guys have a pure essential oil um, that was given to you in your kit, and you can use that in your massage for next week. But if you have the opportunity to order some oils, then I highly recommend doing that so you have a variety to choose from. Okay, so we are going to pour the boiling water into um, just our empty bowl. I put aromatherapy in here so that we're going to create an aromatherapy bomb. So this is going to instantly diffuse into the air. And then that's the bowl I put my base oil with aromatherapy. Okay, so pour that in. Not too much, you don't want your actual bowl to float away. Um, so I've placed that in and you can see instant diffusion of the essential oils into the air. Okay, so if you don't have a nubilizer, this is the perfect way to enjoy your aromatherapy. Okay, so that's boiling water. Now I'm gonna stick my massage oil directly in Okay, so now I have instant diffusion of aromatherapy into the air and my essential oil in my carrier oil is gonna be nice and hot for when I start my massage on my client. Okay, so this is what we're gonna do next week um, before I start my demo. I'm gonna do all my prep. I'm gonna show you guys how to set up your beds, um, how to set up your station. Um, how to prep your hands and make sure there's no cuts or scrapes or paper cuts on your hands. Um, right now, um, with this whole thing going on, you might feel more comfortable doing the massage with gloves on. Um, but if it's a family member that you've been living with, um, um, it's personal preference. So if you guys want to practice this at home, just doing a little aromatherapy balm, um, and diffusing it into the air, that would be awesome. Great for you, you can get used to um, the scent of your aromatherapy. And, okay, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, your little bowl is the base oil and aromatherapy oil. So this is what I'm gonna use to massage my client with. And this is just water in the bigger bowl. This is just water and aromatherapy. But I like, you don't have to put aromatherapy in the bowl that's heating up your oil, but I like to um, just because I like to diffuse it into the air. Nubilizers are good, but you need to have the nubilizer running for at least an hour before it fills the room with the aroma. With an aromatherapy bomb, it just instantly diffuses into the air. So I like to do that like right before my client gets into the room. Um, and this is gonna heat up my massage oil very quickly because we know we don't put oil, base oil or aromatherapy oil in the microwave to heat it up, okay, ever. Okay, 
that's it for today, ladies. Make sure you get ready for your massage demo next week. Um, and then we're going to go into waxing. So I want you guys to make sure you are starting to grow your hair. Um, fi find family members that have hair, hairy legs, hairy arms. Um, I'm going to start doing the demo on my arms, on my fingers, on my lip, on my eyebrows. Um, and then we're going to go into the leg area. Okay. So please start growing your hair. It's really easy for us to practice hair removal um, on our legs. Um, we can do it on our cells, we can do it on our thigh, we can do it on our bikini, we can do full Brazilians. Just joking. We're not doing full Brazilians on ourselves. <laughs> that would be really difficult. Um, but there is a lot um, on our body that we can remove um, together. So I'll be doing most of my demos on myself. Um, I do have my partner at home that will be my lovely model for massage and hopefully he will let me wax his chest and his back and that's it for now okay ladies um do you have any more questions for me if not i will talk i know <laughs> i know waxing so fun don't start waxing without me I know you guys have your wax kits and you have your strips. I don't want you to start waxing until you see my demo and we can do it together, okay? If it's not done correctly, you can cause injuries. I agree, Mina. I'm gonna make mine model for me as well. It's really nice practicing on men because usually men have real, lots of hair and so you can see the hair coming out. It's easy to wax out. Um, and it grows back. So they have nothing to worry about. And a lot of men are getting waxed now. A lot of men, summer's coming. They want to be nice and clean. They want to be hairless for summer. They're going to be going topless a lot. Um, and lots of men like getting their eyebrows done. Men are very aware of self-grooming and having clean eyebrows and um, smooth arms and legs. So hopefully you guys have somebody you can practice on. But again, like I said, there's a lot we can do on ourselves. So. Okay, and I am going to be doing attendance. I can see everybody's here. We are missing a few people, um, so you will not get that attendance. Um, I know you can go back and you can watch this live um, at later times during the week. So if that's the case, you have to let me know and um, we will figure out your attendance then. Okay, so everyone that's here now, everyone that's been a part of this um, live um, today, please write in, oh, what was that, Amir? Just say, I'm here, okay. Yeah, so you guys can type something in right now just type in, I'm here. If you're here, just type in, I'm here. And then that's how we're going to be able to know that you're um, present for the lives. I was here the whole <laughs> I know you were, Gabby. Yeah. If you haven't asked any questions or you didn't um, type anything, then just make sure you do. Perfect. Thanks, guys. And that's nice and hot. Perfect for our dry hands from using way too much hand sanitizer. 
yes, please fill out your exit cards. Um, there's only a few questions. So everything that we're doing, the exit cards, um, don't forget the assignments, the questions, the quizzes, um, everything counts for hours. So if you complete everything that Anna has um, requested that you complete um, on your outline, you'll get full hours. Um, if you don't do the questions, you're not going to get hours for that. If you don't do your um, completion card, you're not going to get hours for that. So everything has different hours. So make sure you complete everything. If you don't do an assignment or you don't do a project, you're not going to get hours for that, okay? Okay, ladies, I know that's um, our last couple of live trainings have been about an hour, um, but next week, because we're going to be doing demos um, and we're going to be talking a lot about technique, um, plan to um, plan for an hour and a half and uh, it'll just be a, a little bit longer than normal. Okay, that's it. Have a wonderful day and I look forward to seeing you all tomorrow morning during our Zoom. Bye.